All right, you guys, I am back with part, girl, is it part four? Part four of Weeping Angels. A quick recap for part three. We just found out that Michael actually is a detective um, based out of Dallas, Texas. And girl, we don't know if it's Dallas. It's based out of Texas, and he's now in Chicago. He's been assigned to the Chicago area because they have had girls that have been coming up missing. Now they have another girl that has came up missing and um, the Flower Sisters know her. And so you guys, we're gonna cut to a couple of days after Michael has revealed to Willow that he's actually a detective. Now, Willow sits on this information. She's not gonna say anything because she kind of likes Michael. And she feels like even though Michael wouldn't care if she would tell her family that he's a detective, he probably would prefer if she didn't, right? So y'all, where we're we gonna take this story now? Like I said, I know how it's gonna end, girl, but I don't, I don't know the journey to get to the end. So, Willow, like I said, decided to send her this information, but she's also thinking about the information that Mrs. Goldstein uh, revealed to her about her seeing um, romance, love, and death. And so she figured that the death is, she has a feeling that death is getting closer because like I said, she they knew, her entire family knew the young girl that was missing, 19 year old girl in the neighborhood. Okay, so a couple of days later, that family is having dinner and all of a sudden the father tells Wynette, the mother, he's like, I need to go ahead and go back to the shop. There was a couple of things that I forgot to put away. Now Wynette doesn't say anything, but she gives him a little a little suspicious look like, what do you mean? And so he's like, remember we got an extra order of, girl, I don't know, an extra uh, extra order of sausage that came in. Yeah, my lips are looking a kind of way. Let me put up some lipstick on, girl. So anyway, Anthony was basically saying that, yeah, I got a couple of things that came in um, late yesterday and I want to make sure that everything is put up in time. So Tony makes his way back to the shop, but instead of going to the shop, he veers left and goes somewhere else. He's in this dingy little neighborhood that's probably about three or four blocks away. He's doing it on foot, child. And so he knocks on the door. The person's open up the door. This is a young man. He stands about 5'9". Um, he is a red bone. I shouldn't say that. So this is Tony. Hey, BJ man. Um, I called you earlier. You didn't answer. He's like, well, hey, I told you as soon as I get in and get settled in, I will answer. And so Tony sits down and he just, sits, just doesn't even like ask. He just goes ahead and sit down. He's like, so did you do what I asked you to do? And BJ looks at him again with a sly smile on his face. He's like, yeah, I, I took care of it. He's like, are you sure? Because I'm telling you, man, like if, if all this comes up, you're going to go down too. And so, and so BJ's like, yeah, I took care of it, Tony. You have nothing to worry about. So Willow wakes up at her normal time and she turns over and she sees that Violet has already gotten up. Is her name Violet, y'all? The second oldest child. Yes, Violet has already gotten up and gone to school, but really she's going to go hang out with Gerald. Gerald does not have a job at all, child. She doesn't even know how Gerald is um, managing this little one-bedroom studio shack, but word on the street is that he's in the streets, if you know what I mean. So, anyway, y'all, um, Willow kind of rolls her eyes. She gets up, she makes her way into the living room and she sees her mom there and she's like well hey you want to make sure that the girls are up and ready willow goes in and she opens up the bedroom door and she sees that the girls are already gone the twins are gone and so she's like mama the twins are already gone and why was like that's not possible because i told them to get ready and they're supposed to come in here and have breakfast so Willow goes back into and she looks around. She starts calling the name, their names, you know, Jasmine, Lily. No one's answering. Y'all, her heart is kind of racing. And so that's when she looks around. That's when she looks around and she hears some laughter. She opens up the door and she sees the twins walking up the stairs. And she's like, Wynette pushes Willow out the way. She's like, Twins, where did y'all go? And they look kind of like they've been, they in shocked. And behind the twins is that man. BJ. And so Wynette's like, twins, hurry up and go inside. You know, I'll talk to y'all in a minute. And so, um, 
why not turn around she looks at willow she's like willow you know go ahead and make sure that they have breakfast and i'll be in there in a minute uh willow's concerned she's like is everything okay mama she's like yeah yeah willow i'll be in there in a minute so willow looks at her mama and she looks down at the man bj bj girl bj's fine bj's fine like i said he's five eight he's fair skinned um he got curly hair um he's dressed really nice even though he lives in that little you know in a rougher part of town he still puts himself together fairly nice and so willow's like okay i don't know how my mama knows these people this person but whatever so she goes in and gets the, the kids ready or well, the twins ready and this is why next she turns around um we left off with the mysterious man bj having gotten the twins early in the morning to get something from uh uh an ice cream shop that just so happens to be open early in the morning girl i know that's not really realistic but um he saw them out there and hey free ice cream they're 12 years old okay so Wynette now is talking to the mysterious man she told willow to go back up with the twins willow's a little concerned because she has no idea who this person is right this is Wynette talking to bj she looks a little concerned on her face, right? There's a there's a, a look of confusion and concern because why the hell are you out with my babies early in the morning giving them ice cream? Hey BJ, um, so when did you get into town? BJ is smiling at her again with this sly smile. And he's like, well, hey Wynette, nice to see you. Oh, I got in town a couple of days ago. So why not was why Nat was a little confused by that. She's like a couple of days ago, Tony didn't tell me anything about this. That's when BJ says, Well, yeah, why not? I'm pretty sure there's a couple of things that Tony hasn't told you about. So why not was like, hmm, girl, dig. Sorry. <laughs> so she's like, okay, so how long do you plan to stay in town? And so that's when BJ responds. She's like, Well, I don't know. You know, I may make this my second home, home away from home. Sorry, you guys. So Annette was like, she looks at him and she studies him. She's like, well, it was nice to see you, BJ, but I got to run up and make sure that the girls are fine, okay? So when um, Annette goes back up, you know, she leaves BJ to look at her walk up the stairs. Um, and he goes on about his day, y'all. So Annette goes up there and she's like, twins. And the twins turn around in unison looking at her. She's like, look. I'll explain to you guys later on, but if you ever come across that man, you are not to go with him. Do you understand? And they shook their head in unison. That's when Willow came around the corner from the kitchen. She's like, Mama, is everything okay? And Wynette's like, yeah, baby, everything is okay. Just, where's your father? And so Wynette said, you know he's at the shop. She's called. that's right. Okay, I'm going to go down there. You watch the girls. I'll be back. So Wynette goes down to the shop, y'all, because she's upset, right? She goes down to the shop. And she sees her as customer, so she doesn't say anything in front of the customer. She waits till the last person gets checked out. And she waits till Tony checks out the last person. Oh, girl, this is getting juicy. Hold on, let me, let me get some um, motivation. <laughs> Tony knows that she knows that BJ is in town. So she said, so this is why not to Tony. She's like, so Anthony... Child, when she goes to Anthony, we know it's serious. She's so Anthony, why didn't you tell me that BJ was in town? And so he said, look, why not? I was going to get around to telling you, but, you know, I've been so busy here at the shop that I just haven't. She said, but you know that's serious. You know, I came down this morning and apparently he had taken the girls to go get some ice cream. And that's when Tony looked at her. He's like, he did what? She's like, yeah, he had taken the girls to get some ice cream. And we didn't know where they were at, but you know, that's nice to him. And so he was just, you know, being nice, giving them some ice cream, but I don't really want him around the kids unless we're there, you know, as you know, together as a family, unless we're all there. And he looks at her, he said, that's okay, why not? You know, you don't have to worry about it, I'll handle it, right? All right, y'all. So uh, he goes on about his day. And so Willow goes ahead and goes to the store, you know, midday, because it's busy. It's busy on a Saturday, and in comes Michael. Fine, Detective Michael, he's rushing in. At the same time, you guys, there is a radio playing in the shop, and so Willow is there, and all of a sudden, they hear the newscaster on the radio say, breaking news, breaking news. Um, this is exclusive. We just understand that um, um, the body of the first young woman that went missing has been found. Um, channel, uh, tune in, girl, I'm making this up. <laughs> tune in later on tonight for more information on Channel 6 News or whatever. So Willow is like, Daddy, did you hear that? And Anthony looks at her, he's like, yeah. 
he's like, you know what, Willow, can you handle this for a minute? You know, can you, I, I hate to leave you here by yourself, but I promise, baby, I'll be right back. And so she's, she shakes her head. She's like, yeah, daddy, it's okay. I know this is upsetting for all of us, right? The daddy leaves, child. He leaves Willow there. The daddy goes, you know, back towards the house like he's walking towards the house. But instead, he turned towards the apartment where BJ lives. He knocks on the door and BJ answers the door. He's like, well, hey, what's going on, Tony? And he pushes him to the side. He said, man, look, if you ever be around my family again, it's gonna be a problem. BJ's like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, Wynette came into the shop this morning and told me that you took the twins down to get some ice cream. And so he's like, well, yeah, I think it's about time that your kids meet their older brother. Y'all, all right, y'all, that's part four of Weeping Angels, okay? So we know the about a body has been found. The mysterious man, BJ, is actually Tony's, <laughs> Tony's son, y'all. So yeah, y'all, that's it for part four, okay?